Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and today I am bringing you a look at how to put an antenna into remote tech that normally doesn't allow remote tech communications on that antenna. Step one is find an antenna that you actually want to do something like that to. Well, I happen to have one. It looks like this. I'm working on my Odyssey installation, and this antenna that comes out of Lackluster Labs, I would like to turn it into a communications antenna, because that's what it looks like to me. Normally, Remote Tech doesn't want to make this communicate, so we're going to create a configuration file that enables Remote Tech on this. Now we need to locate that part's name. So we'll begin in our project folder, which here mine is Project Odyssey. Go into Game Data, LLL in this case, because it's an LLL antenna. Then we go into what, wherever it is that we need to go to find that part. So for me, that means I have to go into Parts, Science, Com Tower, and then we'll find the part file, the CFG. We open that up, and at the top you can see the name of it. Then when we scroll down a little bit, we see this section that has the transmitter. We're going to want to remember some of the stuff from this section. You can edit the part directly, but it's probably safer if you make a config file that will just fix up the part after it's been loaded. I'll do that by creating a new file right here in the same directory with the comm tower. And when we open that up, we have to create this section that uses the name that we saw a moment ago as the part name in the first section. Next, we want to remove the old transmitter, so we add this line to our config file. Next, I need to explain the difference between the signal processing unit types. So they have an active and a passive type of signal processor. The active type goes on your command pods. It's the one you interact with when you have Kerbals on board. Passive is what you put on an antenna. So we need to add this section to the configuration file we've been working on so far. Now we need to add a new transmitter because the first thing we did in this file was we deleted the old transmitter by putting that exclamation point in front of the module name. You can either make up your own game balance for this or you can just copy the values that were in the old transmitter and reuse them for the new transmitter. You can see those two lines where we're allowed to set the minimum and maximum range which I filled in with 8 million meters and the energy cost of just having the thing running all the time, not counting if we were doing science transmissions. And finally, a couple more things. Some antenna have an effects module that you need to initialize as well. So if you see a line like this in the transmitter section that says deploy FX modules or maybe progress FX modules, you need to copy and paste those values into your transmitter. Also, if you want it to be one that could be ripped off during liftoff, then you need to add a line like this. Max Q equals 6,000 seems to be a fairly standard value for ripping off an antenna. And that's it for an antenna. However, it's a little bit different for a dish. I also want to put in an LLL dish. So let's go do that. We already have this antenna here, but what if I want to put this dish in as a remote tech dish that's pretty much the same idea as, let's say, one of these, which is a normal old communications dish that you get automatically because this configuration file for stock has already been done for you. Okay, so the same idea follows. We need to make a configuration file for this dish now. You're going to track down the name of it the same way that you tracked down the name for the antenna. I tracked mine down here to Game Data LLL Part Science Rotating Dish. Opening that up, I can see the name of it is LLL Rote Dish. So I create a new configuration file that has that in it, including the same sections we did last time, the one to take away the transmitter and one to add the SPU passive. Next, we either need to get the transmitter values from the original file and copy them into ours, or just make up our own values. Following that, we can also put in the dish range. There's a minimum and maximum range and how many meters away you can be and still use that dish. There's also the energy cost there, as well as dish angle, which is a little different from an antenna, which is omnidirectional. And if we want, we can still put in that max Q value like we did for the other one. And the last thing is if the dish or antenna that you have picked has an animation associated with it, you're going to want to put a section like this. We're looking right here at the configuration file that was already set up by the author of Remote Tech to manage converting squad antenna and dishes into working with Remote Tech. 
and several of those have animations associated with them so this is how those get disabled and hooked into remote tech rather than being able to, to do them manually when you're not in communication. As long as you have module manager already installed which you should because it's pretty standard these days if you're doing any kind of modding that should be it. You now have two new antenna, one dish, one regular antenna that will work in your remote tech networks. Good luck and until next time I will see you later Kerbinauts.